Greetings. I'm David Hunt, owner of Game Masters Guild, and I'd like to welcome you back to another episode of The Mystic Arts. It's been a little while since I've done one of these episodes, and I'm very excited to be doing this one today because I'm going to be painting a lava monster. And I did one a while back, and now I'm going to take one of these Nolzer's Earth Elementals, and I'm going to paint them into a lava monster for you. Now, you can call them a magma elemental or a lava elemental, but I'm just going to call them a lava monster. Maybe he's a superheated from being in a volcano. Doesn't matter. It looks cool, and I'm going to show you how to paint one. Now, this is the first one that you see right here. This is the first lava monster that I painted. The second one I'm going to paint for you as you're watching this video. Now, originally, I used some red spray primer, but today, I know you may not have spray primer, so I'm going to use these paints that you see in front of me. I'm going to use as a base Evil Sun Scarlet, and I'm used that as my red. And then for next for my yellow, I'm going to use Flash Gets Yellow. And uh, I can mix both those colors together, get an orange if I want to, but also I decided to have an orange on hand so I could just have a orange that's not that I don't have to mix myself. And in this case, I'm using a Riza Rust, a dry. Why? I don't know, just because I can. It's what I grabbed. And just to show you that you don't have to do base, layer, they don't all have to be the same, it's not a big deal. And as you can see right here on my Lava Monster, in order to get that cool definition that he's actually a superheated creature, I got used some Abaddon Black, and also on the base I used some Agrellon Earth. Now, on the base that I'm going to be painting today, even though I used the Grelin Earth on my Lava Monster, which you see on the right, and for the extra crackle effect, I'm probably not going to get around to it in this video, but that Grelin Earth is really cool stuff, and if you slop it on there and you let it dry, it crackles, it looks really good, and if you're gentle, you can brush some extra black on or other colors. So the first thing I'm going to start out with, though, is the Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm going to go ahead and start using that as a base. Now, of course, if you have access to a spray primer, you may want to do it. Uh, for me, I like using a spray primer even on pre-primed things like this Nolzer's Earth Elemental just because it was quick, it was easy, and it got into all those little nooks and crannies really easy. And there's a lot of little nooks and crannies on this Earth Elemental. But again, I'm actually going to paint it like you would paint it in case you don't have spray primer. It takes me a little bit longer to get in those little nooks and crannies, but honestly, it's not too bad. It takes me about about 10 minutes to get a full decent red coat on this guy. And as a matter of fact, in order to not bore you, I'm gonna go ahead and jump ahead about 10 minutes so you can see the Earth Elemental coated in all red. And in 10 minutes, I've got one red Earth Elemental waiting to be turned into a lava monster. Now, but I'm not gonna stop right there with the red. I'm gonna actually go ahead and paint the entire base because the same treatment that I give the earth elemental, I'm going to give it to the ground below him. Like he's in a molten area or he's by a volcano where there's lava flows or maybe wherever he goes he turns the ground molten. I don't know. But at any rate it looks cool when it's done anyways. So we're going to paint the base real quick. Okay it only took me about a minute to finish painting that base and now I'm going to break out the flash gets yellow and I'm going to start hitting in with a little bit of that. Now you may want to consider if you have a painting handle just like the Citadel one here you may want to go ahead and put them in that. Now I used to not use painting handles and I thought I don't need to use a painting handle why I can hold it just fine with my hands. Well uh, after using painting handles for a little while well I gotta admit honestly most of the time I prefer using a painting handle it's more comfortable on my hand it holds the miniature good I get a lot less paint on my hands uh, more or less and now there are some times I don't use a painting handle but uh, all in all I highly recommend it and now I'm just going to take some as flash gets yellow and every time I put paint on of course except when I'm you know super coating like the whole miniature red like here with the flash gets I'm just you know I thin out the brush a little bit and now I'm just kind of hitting them in spots to get that yellow and then I'm going back before the paint dries and I'm kind of spreading out that yellow a little bit so it's not so stark, so it's not so strong. I'm trying to blend it just a little bit. And I'm not doing anything special here. I'm just taking my brush and taking the yellow and I'm just kind of spreading across this whole body. And I think because of the camera, I'm actually going to stop using my painting handle. 
but uh, that'll be okay. If you have a painting handle, go ahead and keep using it. I'm just uh, not using the painting handle right now because of the closeness of the camera. But here we go. I'm going to keep working with the yellow and just hitting them in spots, just anywhere that looks good. Uh, I got to try to make sure I keep a nice balance where there's not too much yellow, and I want some spaces where the yellow is very prominent, and I want other areas where the yellow is kind of thin. And basically, how you do that is you just put on some yellow and just put it on the sp in splotches and keep moving around just like you see me doing. I'm not working on any one particular area. So when I first put yellow on, the brush has got a decent bit of yellow paint on it. So I go and I hit numerous different spots with my brush and like on his hand, like on his face, and you see there's a lot of it. And then as the yellow paint starts to be less on my brush, then I go back and I spread the paint that's on the miniature, I spread it out more and more and more. If I don't want it too thin, well then I just don't hit that spot with my brush, I leave it, well, as you can see right here. But if I want it thinned out a little more, well I just keep taking my brush, I keep spreading it out. Now you may think that maybe I've got too much yellow on there, or not enough, uh, but that's okay. You know, when you're painting yours, you paint it to your satisfaction, to whatever makes you happy. Don't worry about how my comes out, only worry about how you like yours. And remember, really, you can't get it wrong. That's what I love about painting. You can't get it wrong. You just need to, it's just the satisfaction of doing something yourself that I enjoy. And it gives me confidence when I paint. And now I'm going to go ahead and add me a little orange to it. Now I could have mixed the um, red and the yellow to get me an orange. And when I thinned out the yellow, it kind of, when it goes over the red and it thins out, it kind of gives me an orange. But with that rise of rust, I just want a nice obvious orange so I'm going to hit it and I'm just going to paint over the various spots to get that orange. And as an orange I'm going to use some of this riser rust to put on there. Now I don't want you to think because I'm using a dry there's some kind of special technique or hidden secret to it. Nope, it is literally the first orange I saw in my box when I grabbed orange paint for this video. Uh, you could call me a lazy painter because I'm not using an actual orange layer or base or because I'm not mixing the, my red and my yellow together, together to get a certain shade of orange. Nope. I just grabbed riser rust because it was orange, and if I didn't feel like blending, which I didn't, at least, you know, mixing the two colors, I'm just going to hit it with a, any kind of orange, and that was the first orange I grabbed. I like painting for the sake of painting. I enjoy painting because it's fun and it's relaxing for me. I don't let it stress me out. I don't want any of my hobbies to stress me out. And I'm just happy that at the beginning of the day, I start out with this gray chunk of plastic. And by the end of my painting session, I have something cool and dynamic looking that I painted myself. And I love having that kind of feeling. It's great. Plus, it boosts my confidence. And honestly, the more you do anything, the better you're going to get. And you just got to keep trying. It's too easy to be self-critical and say, oh, I can't do that. But if you do exactly what I'm doing here, you're going to have a lava monster at the end of the day. And I got to tell you, so far, so good. I just keep diving back into that riser rust bottle and just adding a little more orange here and there, wherever I feel like. Covering some of the red, covering some of the yellow, just whatever seems to be pretty good. And so far, I'm real happy with it. All right, now we're going to clean up my brush. And this is the part where the transformation is really going to hit home. All this extra work with the red, the yellow, and the orange. See, right now, he kind of doesn't look like anything. I'm, I'm not even sure what he looks like right now. I don't know, maybe an angry popsicle stick. I have no idea. Or a condiment explosion. Who knows? But um, now, we're going to add some of that Abaddon Black. And again, with these paints, I'm telling you the specific paints I'm using, but again, you can use any color from any brand. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> now, I'm definitely going to make sure to thin out the black a little bit before I start painting because I don't want too much on there because I think it could, too much could ruin the effect. Okay, here we go. A little black here, a little black there. And see now how I'm putting this black on is I'm going perpendicular to all these little ridges and bumps he has. So basically, I'm not following 
the edges. I'm cr going across all the edges to highlight just the high points on the mancher. This is probably the most technical thing I'm going to do on this mancher, other than putting on some aggrelin earth, which I don't think I'm going to have time for in this particular video. But again, putting on that aggrelin earth is not that hard. And I'll cover that in a later video. And as you can see, though, look at me, just put that black on, and you can really see this elemental really start to take shape. And again, you know, if you get some black on a low spot, it's not a big deal. Just uh, don't sweat it and just keep working on those high spots and spreading out that black. And already, it's definitely making a difference. But you're going to want to get a pretty even spread, I guess, all over them. Try to avoid what I did right there, kind of underneath his mouth. It looks like there's one giant black splotch. Um, I, I probably could have done that a little bit better, kind of a slip on my part. But you know what? I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to go back and try and fix it doesn't matter to me. I'm just going to roll with it. And quite frankly, it's not a big deal. And so far, I really like how it's coming out. You can really see how it's taking shape. Oh, I love it, man. It's like magic. When you get that final little coat of paint that just ties everything together, it's pretty cool, I got to admit. And painting, oh God, man, I really love painting. If you need something relaxing to do, man, painting is it. If painting doesn't relax you, man, I'm not sure what's going to relax you. But for me, it slows down my breathing, makes me focus. And quite frankly, I seldom think about anything else when I'm painting. Uh, so much so to the point when I'm actually painting, when I'm actually making these videos, I paint first and then I do a voiceover to my video. Because the way I'm painting, I just, I just focus on the painting. And very seldom is it... Will it work for me to do the voiceover while I'm actually painting? It just doesn't work too well. So I like to do the voiceover after I've already done my painting. Plus, it doesn't mess up that nice relaxing feeling that I have while I'm painting. And it, I got to tell you, it definitely doesn't feel like work. It's fun. It takes me a while, but uh, it's totally worth it, totally worthwhile. And start to finish this whole miniature um, probably takes me about, I think, 30 minutes start to finish. Now, this video, it doesn't take nowhere near that long to actually paint him. But uh, for you, start to finish, about 30 minutes. And that's because I actually cut a little bit of that time-consuming, tedious painting just out of there. Uh, especially when I was coating the whole miniature with red. And that's kind of a boring part. You don't want to watch me paint red all day. So I cut that out. And that was about 10 minutes right there. And uh, I got to tell you, it, it doesn't take long to put something like this together. A couple finishing touches and see I've also done the ground. And man, I tell you, that's it right there. There's your lava monster. All done. And there we go. One freshly painted lava monster. Now, one I do have a secret that I will tell you that I do. And that's when I paint... Of course, I try to use as little paint as possible, and I try to keep my layers thin because they dry quicker, which means I can keep painting. By the time I put on one layer of paint and I'm done, and I go to another color, I'm ready to put on another color because most of it's already dry. Now here you'll see the Lava Monster that I painted months ago. And um, again, next to the one I painted today, came out really good. I'm really happy with it. Although you can tell, he's got a lot more orange to him. And honestly, I kind of favor the more orange on him. But I got to tell you, the one with the red, where he's more, where more of the red shows through, um, he still came out really, really good. And I still like the overall effect on him. And I could have fixed that just by easily adding just a little more orange to him, or actually a lot more orange to kind of soften up some of that red, give it that orange glow. But... Even still, they don't need to be exact copies anyways. I, I like it because when I put them on the battlefield, side by side, while we're playing D&D, I can ask a player, hey, which lava monster are you attacking? And he can just point and say, that one. And I can look at my notes and go, oh, it's the red one he's attacking. Or I need to take damage off the orange lava monster. You know, they're, they're, they're still lava monsters. You can still tell what they're supposed to be. And they're each very unique and they're very dynamic in their own way. And 
I am really happy with how these guys came out. Again, I favor the orange, but um, all I needed to really do to get that was to go was to put more yellow and more orange on the one on the right. And if I really wanted to, I could go back and do that. And that's what's nice about this is if I did want to put more orange on them, I could just at any time go back and hit them with some of that extra color. Or if I needed more black, I'd go back and hit them with some more black at a later time. But you know, honestly, I like how they came out. They're both unique. They're both very, very different. And now, now it's time to show you something even more different. So let me clear these guys out of here and show you what else I got in, in mind for you. So just for gee whiz, I actually decided to take an air elemental and turn him into a lava monster. So, and this is what you do if you can't find the right kind of fire elemental. I mean, you could basically say a lava monster is a fire elemental, but let's say there are no fire elementals, or let's say you go and you can't find an earth elemental to turn to a fire elemental or a lava monster. Well, that's okay, because you can grab any elemental and just turn them into a fire elemental. It doesn't matter. And um, I see that a lot. A lot of people are looking for very, very specific miniatures. Well, I have to have an earth elemental. Well, not really. I mean, I could do this. I could do an earth technique on this air elemental. Does it look weird? Maybe, maybe not. Why can't you have swirling motes of earth? Why can't it be like a tornado? Well, well, then Dave, that's that's a that's an air elemental. Uh, if you put the right paint job on him, he can be anything. And an elemental doesn't have a specific shape or form. And so that's why I went ahead and grabbed an earth elemental and I did a practice run on one and now I'm showing you how to do it. And I gotta tell you, I think what's really cool about uh, some of these other elementals, these smaller medium sized ones, they're translucent. So if you paint thin enough, some of that light will kind of hit it and you'll you'll get just a little bit of that translucence in spots. Now, of course, I'm painting pretty pretty heavy on this guy, so I don't know how much that translucence is going to come through. But if you go just a little bit thinner in spots, it's going to come out and it's going to show and it's going to be pretty awesome. All right, so I'm pretty much done with this guy. And I uh, know he's got a little bit of wet paint. And whoops, there we go. Uh, dang it, get off of there. All right, so what I'm going to do now is uh, just a couple finishing strokes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just sit here and let them dry because I'm going to impromptu paint this guy into a lava monster. Now, this warrior here, he is completely just a random miniature I grabbed, and I did not try to paint him prior. He's the only miniature in this video that I didn't do like a test miniature for before actually painting. But I'm just going to grab him. I thought, well, I'm going to see what happens. Whatever happens, happens, just to see how we can come out. And I think this is kind of cool. Um, a lot of people, you know, they buy miniatures, and they're not sometimes, you know, they're worried about messing up. Well, you know, sometimes you just can't worry about that. You know, however this guy comes out, he's going to come out. We know the Earth Elemental looks good as a lava monster. The Air Elementals came out really good, or at least they will. I mean, because you can see the one I already painted in the background there. And this guy, we're just going to take a look and see how it comes out. Let's uh, skip forward to the application of the yellow, orange, and black. All right. And here we've already got some yellow on this guy. I'm just hitting him real quick with some of that yellow. Do -de -do -de -do -de -do, just like that. Super easy. It'd probably help if I held the miniature down in view of the camera so you could actually see. And there we go. I got some yellow on them. And then we're going to take some of this yellow. And now we're going to hit my fighter here, which is just some quick yellow. It's a lot different on this guy, although there's a lot of cool surfaces to put that yellow on. But it definitely a lot, a lot different painting him than an elemental. It just there's a lot of smaller details to get filled up. There we go. And right now, really what you're seeing is you're seeing kind of a assembly line painting because this is a good way to paint a lot of miniatures in a short amount of time. If they all got a very similar theme, it's easy to line them up just like I did with the air elemental and I put the red on them, then I put the red on the soldier and I went back and put yellow on the air elemental, then I went back and put yellow on the soldier. And this allows time for the paint to dry. And plus also with repetition, 
you get better at doing things, you get faster at doing things, you know how much paint you need to apply. In the very beginning, even painting a lava monster, you're going to be a little slower, you're going to be more careful, you're going to be more, more thoughtful about it, but once it becomes more automatic, you almost instinctively know how much paint to put on, what you need, you don't even have to second guess yourself, it just, it just happens. And like here, I'm getting some orange. I'm just throwing it on them real quick just to give them some contrast, that yellow and that red. We're just putting it on pretty quick. And most of these layers, again, that I'm putting on are not very thick at all. So they dry pretty quickly. So I'm really not waiting. Uh, a lot of times I'll have a movie or TV in the background. And if I got to wait for something to dry, usually I watch about 10 or 15 minutes of a favorite show. And next thing I know, He's dry and ready for me to paint. And uh, sometimes I even have a little fan maybe blowing next to me just for air circulation, and that helps dry the paint too. But also too, you know, if you're working with a wet palette or you got paint, you know, on a piece of plastic or something, like I'm not always using a palette or a wet palette. Usually I just got paint out. I got to be careful. So, you know, if I got a fan on, it doesn't dry my, my source of paint out. And here we're just taking that guy. We're just throwing some more orange on him just for good measure. And uh, I think it's going to come out really good. All right. Now let's uh, fast forward to some black. All right. So I've literally jumped ahead maybe two or three minutes. And you can see I'm already way into putting the black on the air elemental. And already he's really starting to take shape. And then also, too, I want to make sure to get the base because the base is important as well because I'm trying to get that effect on the base as if he's coming up out of the molten ground or he's disturbing the ground and making it molten. And then same effect with my fighter. I'm just going to hit him with some black and it's pretty impressive how you get that layer on him and it just transforms him. And uh, I got to tell you, I'm really happy with how it's coming out. Now again, with the smaller figure, it's super easy to get a lot of details lost. So you got to be real easy on that black paint. The easiest part about these guys is putting on the, the red, the yellow, the orange. It's not too bad. It's the black that really sells it. So too little, it's not enough. Too much, you lose some detail, even on the big ones. Plus, also too much, and it just doesn't look right for stars. It looks like just like he's part tar monster or something like that. And you definitely don't want that. But you definitely want to go a little easy on the black. Uh, not too much, not too little. If you do accidentally get a little too much on, well, just leave that spot and just watch out for the rest of air, rest of the areas. You know, one or two big spots isn't going to be too bad, but too much of it will kind of make it look weird, I think. But uh, the black is definitely what sells it, and you still got to have a lot of it. But again, just be very, very careful of your edges and all your detail. And here I'm just putting some final touches on him. And not too much more, and he's pretty much going to be done. I think uh, I think I'm pretty much done with the Air Elemental Two, or I'm sorry, the Lava Monster, the Air Elemental that I turned into Lava Monster. And I'm pretty happy with my with my fighter that I to turned into a Lava Monster. I mean, how cool is he? I mean, look at that. That was totally impromptu. I did not try that on a smaller figure, and I just kind of gave it my best. And man, I got to tell you, I like how he came out. I'm not sure where I'm going to use them at or why, but man, I'm going to find myself a reason. And I got to tell you, overall, I think all these guys came out pretty cool looking. And you can definitely tell what they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be some kind of lava monster, fire elemental. I think it's great. And um, you can see the one I did earlier. I actually kind of like the black on him, even though he's got more black. And I always say you got to be a little careful putting that black when you're paint these lava monsters but I think it kind of sells it more for the one on the for the one I did earlier the one on the right uh, but that's okay uh, for the one on the left he's uh, a little thinner on the black but that doesn't hurt him either he's still pretty sweet looking and uh, let's there we go and there's my lava monster human uh, again I don't know why I'd have an elemental lava monster shaped like a humanoid but God, there's got to be a story there there's got to be something you could do with it I think it's cool. At the very least, I'd put it out there on the board and maybe use them as just a medium elemental or a minor elemental. I don't know. It's pretty cool. Uh, again, you can kind of see that black on his cloak where 
kind of got too much in there so it's almost too much but it kind of makes sense on the cloak because it's flapping in the breeze so and it's a thinner material so it's going to be cool and faster so i got him done i got two air elementals i turned into lava monsters i got an, two earth elementals i turned into lava monsters and if you haven't figured it out by now i like saying lava monster you make a movie with lava monster in there I'm sold. I'm going to watch that movie no matter how bad it is. And I want to be in that game with a lava monster. Well, anyways, I, uh, I really hope you enjoyed today's video on the Mystic Arts about how to paint a lava monster. And I hope you learned something. And uh, most importantly, um, don't be too critical of yourself. Take it easy. Uh, the more you paint, the better you'll get. Well, there's going to be a few pictures at the end of this so you can see some of these close up. And uh, again, thanks for joining me today. And my name is David Hunt. I'm owner of Game Masters Guild. Thanks again for watching. And I want you all to stay safe, play great games, and I'll see you real soon.